welcome back to Linda's Pantry. And today we're refurbishing another piece of furniture. And this is an antique uh, oak sofa table. It's solid oak. It's in fair condition. Now, it has sat behind my couch for years. And the last 12 years, it's had morning sun that comes in. It's really played havoc on the surface here. Uh, things have been spilt. You know, life happens. And um, sometimes your furniture suffers for it. So we're going to uh, do a refurbishing and make this a shabby chic table. And this is going to be a distressed table. So um, it did have a crack down here that I filled with wood filler. I wasn't going to fill it. I was going to leave it like that. But it was if you picked up in that area, you could feel the wood lifting. So I don't want to compromise the piece of furniture. I'd rather have it sealed back up. And that putty has had time to dry, so I'm just going to take my sanding block and get that sanded. Nice and smooth. The nice thing about chalk painting is there is no prep work. Um, this is easy. And then we're going to wipe our piece down, make sure it's nice and clean, and we get to paint it. And I'm going to do that red that I did on my bar stools and distress this piece heavily. And um, I think it's going to be, and then we're going to antique it. And I think it's going to be a fun piece of furniture to have around. I think I'm going to go ahead and distress even further with some nicks and dings in it because I don't think it's got enough character. But we're going to give it some and we're going to bring this table back to a new lifelong um, journey with us. <laughs> And it's something that I enjoy. This is fun to do. So if you guys enjoy this chalk painting and restoration of furniture, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section below because it's easy and it's fun and you can do a piece like this in an afternoon. I'm not going to rush it though. I'm doing the other bar stool. We're going shopping. I'm just going to start working on this. By the end of the week, it'll be done and uh, back in place and um, we can enjoy it for many, many years to come. So, all right guys. Stay with me. Oh, and don't forget, check the links below because I'll leave a link to some chalk paint that I really like. Um, it's not something that you have to go online to order. You could probably get it in your hardware store. So I'll leave a link to that. If you want to shop online, you could certainly do that. But go to, over to my Facebook page and let me know if you've done any of this kind of work and maybe share some pictures with us. All right, guys. See you so guys, I am back. I am ready to start painting. I've um, did a little bit of uh, distressing <laughs> with a hammer and I've sanded down my areas where I've patched anything, those cracks, and now we're ready to go ahead and start painting. And Amy Howard's paint is going to go a long way. I barely used a half an inch probably not even that, on two bar stools with two coats each. And now we're going to do this table and there'll still be enough left to do something else. So we're going to start down at this end and you're just going to go real nice even strokes. Um, and it covers so well, you're going to really like the end result. So this is really all I'm going to do and see these spots where I kind of dinged in you don't even have to cover them completely if you don't want to, but I, I do want paint in there. So then when I antique, the antiquing will go in there and make that paint even darker and uh, it'll, it'll make it nice. So um, when we distress this, we're going to distress down to some, well, it'll end up down to bare wood because the varnish on this is so thin and in some spots it's worn off, but the beauty of chalk paint is you don't have to worry about that. So. Let me get the first coat of paint on here because watching me paint a whole table is probably going to be pretty boring. I'll bring it in for a close up though so you can see how easy it goes on. So offload your brush so you don't have just gobs of paint on and that's how easy. And if, I don't know if you can see, probably not in camera view, but your areas where you distress, you can stipple that paint right in there. You're just kind of pushing it in with the ends of the bristles. And this paint dries extremely fast. So you, uh, like I just put the second coat on the second bar stool. And when I'm done painting this, that will be ready to distress. And then by the time I'm done with that, this will be ready to distress or have a second coat. Usually you've got some spots that are going to be thinner than others that you're probably going to need a second coat. So there you go. Isn't that pretty? All right. 
So as you can see, I've got this whole thing painted and now we're gonna go ahead and do some distressing. I've already started my distress work and you're just, all those spots that, you know, have different um, ridges and stuff. <laughs> my dog is bringing me a toy. Uh, you go ahead and put a little distress on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn the table right side up so I can really see what I'm gonna see in the end. And excuse my voice, it sounds way worse than it is. I don't feel bad, but I'm losing my voice. So let's get this turned over. So now I've turned the table over. We're gonna go ahead and start the distressing here on the edges of the top. Oh. I'm so excited about this project. Let me bring you in close so you can kind of see what's going on. And get a new sanding block maybe. And for sanding, my favorite is 150 grit. So um, that's what I've got on this green side so let's come in close and show you what it's going to look like so right here you can see i've already distressed so we're going to distress along here a little bit more see how that takes that edge off and i am going to do a little bit on the top of the table in spots as well because i want and I, you're not going to be able to see that very well but um i'll i'll give you close-ups of uh the table as it progresses I'm super excited for this one. Yeah. All right. So that's what we're doing. Hit the stressing. Beat it up. I mean, make it look like it's really got some history to it. And then uh, you're going to want to dust off all the paint. As soon as I get um, a little further along, I'll bring you back. Okay, so here's a close up of what I've distressed on the table. We've got some spots on top where those nicks and dings are and I distressed around the the base here a little bit and on the bottom yeah and strut is trying to help me so that's that's it now we're ready to wax I've dusted all this off and um, I want to go ahead and get it the clear wax on so we can let that have a chance to dry buff it out and put our antiquing on it's going to be fantastic i really like the way this looks it's exactly what i envisioned all right we'll be back all right guys so i've got my clear wax here and we're going to go ahead and start waxing and again excuse my voice i apologize and i've got a a wax brush here and you're gonna, less is more, and the brushes hold quite a bit of wax, so you really wanna work it into the area, and this is the clear wax. Start off with your clear wax, and then we'll come back with the antiquing. So, I'm gonna wax this whole thing, rub any of the excess off with a lint-free towel, and, uh, oh, it's, it's already making the red a, a darker color. I just love it. And this takes about 20 minutes to really dry on here. And it goes from this smooth, chalky finish to this tacky, kind of cold feel. And once it, you can feel that tack, you're ready to buff. Com so I've completely clear waxed this and buffed it to a shine. Now you don't really have to buff it, but I really like to buff it first. I think then I get that, that um, excitement of how this piece is really going to look and you just take a lint-free cloth and just give it a real good shoe shine all over and then we're going to an antique it a little bit and I've already started but you just stipple your brush in your dark wax and dark wax is really dark and there's a couple ways to antique and on the next piece that I show you I'm going to use a little bit different routine instead of clear and dark I'm going to use light and dark so this piece though it's already got you know a dark color so we're getting into all the crevices and and then you can go back over it now like any of the wear marks i want those to be a little bit darker so i'm going to go ahead and come back and hit those also where i've nicked and dinged this um 
with the hammer, I want to really get down it in those and then lightly buff over the top of that. So the wax stays down inside that nick and um, and I've got some real detail down here uh, and I, I, I'm going to bring you in for a close up so you can see that. So um, you're not just taking my word for it, but um, this is my favorite part, the end result. And it, I, I said, oh, I think I should go ahead and put this table up for sale. And my husband could not say no fast enough. He said, absolutely not. It's beautiful, and I want it back behind our couch so we can admire it and get another 20 years of use out of it. So um, that made me feel really good that he likes it as well. So I'm going to bring you over and um, show you some close-ups. And uh, so I hope you can see how what character this has. I left a little crack right here so I could get some of that dark wax in there and then even up here at the ends of the cracks that I filled in. It just came out beautiful. And see that nice shine that it's got? But it's not a high gloss. It's, it's really fun. Now, I will tell you that where I had sanded this way to get my wear marks, um, I didn't like the, the looks of it. So I came back over lightly, and I mean feather light with a coat of paint on those wear mar or those wear marks, and it really refined it out. So um, you can do that as well. And here you can see it's a little duller. That is where I'm just going to take my rag and give it a little bit, of, give it a little bit of a buff. And really, you should wait about 15 minutes um, to buff that. But it, it'll buff out to a nice glossy shine. So then we're going to come down and show you, I want to give you the edges here, <clears throat> show you the wear marks that I've got here on the edges. Oh, I just love it. And in these cracks, I don't know if you can see, in these cracks I've stippled in that dark wax and it, it, where any dirt or any aging would collect. So now we're going to come over here to um, where I want to darken my... Uh, my pedestals. And really, you can offload your brush, but I am putting so little on there that it really doesn't need it. I'm not getting too much wax on. Um, less is more, if you know what I mean. And so down here, any of these edges where you really would see a lot of um, aging, you're going to put that dark wax on in larger amounts. And some places you can totally leave it out. That's why I, wha or I buff it first, so I know where I want to put it. OK, so let me finish getting this done, and then I'll get a bunch of uh, after pictures. I will put a before picture so you remember what it looks like at the end of the video. And guys, I just want to thank you for supporting my channel and watching these videos. And if you'd like to see more of this kind of stuff, go ahead and leave me a thumbs up and a comment down in the comment section. I've got a little end table with a drawer. It's like a nightstand. And it's got an open space down below that's over here in the corner. And it really is too light of wood. It's almost like the little high chair that I did. And I'm going to change that and give that a little distressed look. And it's going to be a pop of different color in this room because I'm going to do it a mossy green with a linen interior in that opening. And I, I think it's going to bring that little table to new life. And um, I can't wait. So if this inspires you, maybe you'll go ahead and pick a piece of furniture in your house and go ahead and give it a new life and uh, change the decor a little bit. It doesn't have to be brand new furniture. And in fact, I've been online shopping for um, used pieces to do different things with. I'd actually like to get a different TV stand here, maybe more of a dresser, and um, make that uh, a shabby chic kind of uh, rustic look. Or, I mean, there's totally different finishes you can do. So. Um, just be creative, take things that you already have, and don't spend a lot of money. And I'm going to tell you, Amy Howard's paint goes so far. I, literally two coats of paint on this table, two coats on the bar stools, and I didn't even use an inch of paint out of that quart can. So if anybody needs to do any red projects, let me know, because I've got some paint. <laughs> and the wax, 
Um, I'm very generous with the wax, especially on the top of this table. I did two coats of clear because it's going to get a lot of wear and tear. My husband sets his coffee cup there, the remote to the TV. I mean, he's he's right hugging the back of the couch, and so it does get some use, and um, I want to make sure, and some sun, it gets morning sun on it, so I want to make sure it's extra protection on the top, so I would always recommend doing that, and um, as always, guys, I can't wait to see you next time for another delicious recipe or another furniture restoration video, so <laughs> let's go do something. <laughs> Bye.